welcome to another edition of the Florida Appeals Journal. I'm Jennifer Carroll, and this week we're going to keep uh, keep it very brief. I just want to explain a little bit about an unusual and uh, not a, a very common extraordinary writ, and that's known as the All Writs Provision. Uh, uh, that's available to to everybody and in all the courts. Uh, there are many extraordinary writs, certiorari, prohibition, habeas corpus, mandamus, but there's a special one that you can use in all the courts, and it's often referred to simply as a constitutional writ. Um, Supreme Court, all the district courts of appeal, and the circuit courts uh, each have a general power to uh, issue all writs necessary to carry out its jurisdiction, its own jurisdiction. So what these are, they really don't have any other remedy except to preserve the power of the court to exercise its, its own jurisdiction and to effectively decide cases um, that have been presented to the court under its other jurisdiction, general jurisdiction, uh, and the rules that apply there too. So what, um, uh, it, it is not an independent source of appellate jurisdiction. So you want to understand that. And uh, what they're, I'd say what they're most commonly used for is really to get a, get a stay. I, I'm going to refer you to, uh, it's an excellent uh, law review article uh, by, I believe it's Professor Mann, uh, that talks about the scope of the All Writs power, and that's 10 Florida State Law Review 197, 1982. So in practice, uh, the writ is most commonly used to get a stay of lower court proceedings. Uh, and it's really a, a strange thing because you normally, under the rules of appellate procedure, when you you file an appeal, say with the district court, uh, they want you, I mean, you follow the rules under uh, the appellate procedural rules. You want to first go to the trial court and ask for a stay. Then if the trial court doesn't give you that stay, you uh, will seek a review of that stay order to the appellate court. But sometimes there are situations where you really can't uh, do that. It could be a uh, timing, certain things going on in the trial court. So uh, a lot of times uh, some practitioners will use the all writs uh, power and they will file a petition um, for the court to exercise its all writs jurisdiction in order to effectuate its, its own jurisdiction and its ability to hear the case. So a little bit confusing, but it, it can be very effective. Um, and you wanna remember that you follow 9.100 of course, which, what does that mean? Again, you're not going to file a record, you're going to file an appendix, and you're going to comply with the procedural requirements um, of uh, 9.100, and you're going to file an appendix. Remember Rule 9.220 with the rules on that, and of course you're going to serve opposing counsel. Now, a couple important things to remember is uh, the courts have not uh, looked too kindly on a practitioner using the all writs power, uh, the all writs, uh, this constitutional writ, to try to challenge a PCA or a per curiam affirmance. And uh, that's the R.J. Reynolds tobacco versus Kenyon, 882 Southern 2nd, 986. That's a Florida 2004. So the all writs jurisdiction cannot be invoked to review per curiam affirmance. And actually, it's, it's really hard that it was impossible to use any writ to, to challenge that. That's always been a touchy area, per curiam affirmances. And effectively, the, the district courts of appeal are the courts of last resort when it comes to, to so many appeals. And if they uh, PCA, do a per curiam affirmance, you really don't have anything to take up to uh, the Supreme Court, for example. And that's frustrated so many practitioners uh, through the years. Uh, and they, they've tried this petition, that petition, this extraordinary writ, and uh, it's just not accepted. Uh, so you can't do that with the all writs. I want to cite to you just a couple of cases um, that may be helpful too. 
Wild B, Do, Dozier, D O Z I E R, 672, son of second 16. That's Florida, 1996. And that's interesting. The Supreme Court has jurisdiction under the All Writs provision to review a matter that pertains to ju judicial assignments. So that gives you an example of uh, when it can be used. This one was interesting, Bedford v. State, 633 Southern 2nd 13. Again, that's a Supreme Court case and saying the Supreme Court has jurisdiction under the All Writs provision to correct an illegal sentence erroneously affirmed in a prior appeal. So sometimes you just get some really quirky uh, uh, matters and, and sometimes that'll fall under, you know, All Writs, so it gives you a, a remedy. And I think this one's pretty interesting. League of Women Voters of Florida versus Data Targeting, 147 3rd 510, Florida 2014. And in that case, uh, uh, the, the court that held all writs provision does not create an independent source of Supreme Court jurisdiction. Rather, it enables the court to protect jurisdiction that might be exercised under, under another provision of the Constitution. And so then that also relates to future jurisdiction. Uh, that the use of all writs is not limited to a pending case. Uh, you may need it to protect the future exercise of jurisdiction. Roberts B. Brown, 43, 7, 3rd, 673, and that's Florida, 2010. Uh, and, and, you know, if there's a threat to jurisdiction uh, also. So it's a very unusual writ, but something that you do want to know about and have in your arsenal when you are working on some pretty convoluted cases uh, and you need help uh, with uh, the appellate court. And you want to remember also, you can file the petition in the circuit court to review a judicial or quasi-judicial action in a lower tribunal, such as the county court, but you're going to have to comply with special provisions of uh, Rule 9.110F. Then otherwise, usually a petition in the circuit court is going to be governed by the requirements of Rule 1.630 of Florida Rules of Civil Procedure. So that, in a quick nutshell, uh, is a brief explanation of the all writs power that is available in all the courts. Um, again, uh, any special issues, questions you may have, please let us know. We will list these uh, citations on our, our website and on our journal site, too. Uh, thank you and look forward to talking with you next time. Hi, I'm Jennifer Carroll, and I want to thank you for watching our video. You can see more of our videos right here. Uh, or better yet, subscribe to our YouTube channel below so you won't miss a single one.